Uh, the presentation I'm going to show you here was one that I did for some commercial real estate agents here in the GTA uh, earlier this year. It was pre-July 1st of this year, so some of the info may be you know, a little dated. It may not be totally relevant because these guys deal more with commercial office space, small-scale light industrial. Um, but uh, what we'll do here, once I get this loaded up and get rolling... I guess I'll wait for Gary. Are we recording right now? Does Gary, anybody know? Okay. <laughs> I think Gary stepped out, so just bear with me while I get this loaded up here. Presentation is going to primarily deal with changes in phase one. From our standpoint as consultants, between the, C the old CSA standard and what the MOE now wants us, or requires us, not wants us, but requires us to do under, under Reg 153 as amended. Um, Did you get the back of there working okay? It, I got it hooked up. Perfect. It took it. Okay, great. So, as Albert mentioned, the amended MOE standards came, came into effect July 1st of this year. Uh, it's a pretty significant change from what was required. And as you mentioned, the CSA standard is no longer referenced in the MOE document. Um, touch on some of these things. It is far more comprehensive. You know, as, again, it, these are things that Albert touched on. The doc, regulation itself is far more expansive. A qualified person must conduct or supervise a Phase 1 ESA and Phase 2 ESA as well. And a qualified person is essentially a professional engineer or a professional geoscientist under the PEO and APGO in Ontario. Um, there is some discrepancy or uh, allowances now with how long something is good for phase one report. They have time frames now of 18 months from when the last time work was done on the property till the current date that the MOE will still accept that document as being current. If it's more than 18 months old, it gets into a bit of a gray area and, and there's a good chance they won't accept it. Um, some of the new terminology is phase one ESA study area, which Albert alluded to, is now a minimum 250 meters from the property boundary. Uh, the CSA standard used to be 250 meters from the middle of the property. Now it's referenced to the property boundary. You have to go 250 meters in all directions. And it could even go beyond that if there is a potentially contaminating property to the subject property that a portion of which is within that 250 meter radius. Uh, Albert already mentioned enhanced investigation property. We'll touch on that later. Same with potentially contaminating activity. Uh, area of natural significance, which is typically surface water body, wetland, that, that type of stuff, and what they call now a conceptual site model, which was no longer part or was not part of the CSA standard. So the objective of phase one is to determine the likelihood that contaminants have affected land or water at a property uh, and helps determine the need for a phase two ESA. It also provides a bit of the basis for completing a Phase 2 ESA. It should give some indication as to where um, contamination may be on a property or what was done on the property that would have caused contamination, which will give you an idea where to look for contamination and what contamination contaminants you want to look for. And it will provide adequate preliminary information to support a risk assessment post-Phase 2 ESA should you decide to go the risk assessment route as opposed to full-scale remediation. These are just the general components of a Phase 1 ESA. Um, these here are spelled out clearly in the, uh, in the MOE document. Uh, this is some of the changes uh, that are highlighted. And um, these are now mandatory sections under the MOE. 153 document as opposed to the CSA which wasn't as comprehensive. So you can see there's there's a fair amount and the MOE document spells out sections they want, 
the information they want in there. Uh, one of the uh, things with the CSA document is it had more or less things you had to do, but it had things that were more or less suggestions that you should look into or, or other consideration items, which some consultants would look at, some wouldn't. Really dependent on, on what you want to do. I'll go back to this here. Sorry about that. Phase one study area, as mentioned, it's 250 meters from the nearest property boundary of the subject property out from there. And as I mentioned, the QP can add other properties as they deem necessary if they feel a certain property has a high likelihood of contaminating the subject property, they will include it and it will be part of the phase one. Uh, an enhanced investigation property, uh, here's the standard list, any industrial properties, a garage which is more or less automotive repair facilities, bulk liquid dispensing, so bulk plants, gasoline stations, and then anywhere where there's been the operation of dry cleaning equipment, which includes a lot of strip shopping centers. A lot of those may have a dry cleaner in there where they're doing on-site dry cleaning. They have a machine in the back, steam presses, they're doing everything right there. So, you know, we see a lot of these in, in the commercial side of things. And to be honest with you, a lot of them, they pose a pretty significant cost if they've contaminated the uh, property underneath the building. Potentially contaminating activity, loosely defined as an activity with the potential to contaminate a property. Uh, there's, I think there's still 71 groups of this. They've changed it up a little bit from pre-July 1 to post. Um, one of the big changes was it used to include storage, on-site storage of, of certain chemicals or use of them at a property. In some instances, they've removed that so that, you know, cosmetic use, your use of cosmetics, um, you know, there's certain things that if you took the broad scope of it, you could say, well, it would apply to almost any residential property. So they, they've changed that up a little bit. And um, there's a nice table out there that sort of shows what they had before and what the new, new potentially contaminating activities are. But there's a significant number of them. If the subject property it falls under one, has activities that fall under this, there's a good chance that the QP is going to recommend a phase two. Um, so, I, I, you know, it would be hard to refute not doing it unless they had substantial evidence that said other, otherwise. Um, area of natural significance. You know, some of the examples of that: the Oak Ridges Moraine, provincial parks, Niagara Escarpment national parks, any municipally designated area, so in other words an area that a municipality or regional government is designated as an area of natural significance. Um, there's also nine sources of information we have to look at, um, one of which is um, environmentally sensitive species, uh, species at risk, things like that that have to be considered. Conceptual site model, this is new to the phase one world. And essentially what it is is a figure showing the subsurface and surface infrastructure and any areas of potential environmental concern. Now uh, for this particular one here, you know, you can see there's a couple contaminant plumes. It shows the underlying soil geology, roughly where the water table is assumed to be. Uh, in phase one you don't always know that. This one here shows well, so you know in this particular case it was a a site that had some previous phase two work done at it. With a phase two ESA, that conceptual site model would be expanded. It would show the wells. It would show areas where you found contamination, if you found any, and proximate aerial extents of it and vertical extents. So under the records review, um, you can see this is all the information we now have to look at and consider. Um, it's a fairly substantial list. Uh, it wasn't quite as comprehensive under the CSA standard. So <clears throat> when uh, you probably have noticed when you're doing phase ones to the new standard, uh, the cost has gone up dramatically versus the CSA standard. Under CSA 
standard was about $2,500, maybe $3,000 for a Phase one ESA. Now we're fighting under the new standard. You know, they're averaging about $6,500. Some of them are upwards of $10,000, depending on where the property is located, the use of the property, and who the neighbors are. Under a records review, we do have to go back to a certain point in time. It's either the first use of, of a property, first developed use of a property, or 1875. So you can imagine in downtown Toronto where things predate that, you know, sometimes you, you may have to investigate a property further back than that, but by the, defi by the definition of the standard, that's, that's what we have to do. And, and I apologize if I'm going through this fast. This presentation was originally developed to be for an hour long, and so I'm trying to shorten it down a little bit as we have another speaker left to come after this. So with interviews, we must interview the property owner or occupant. And if it's an enhanced investigation property, we have to talk with a key site manager. So in other words, somebody who is maybe the facility operator or site operations manager. We have to attempt to interview relevant persons with property, maybe an owner, um, former owner, um, neighbors, government officials, you know, if they filed anything with the ministry or with the municipality. Things like that. These are uh, all the avenues we now have to investigate or at least attempt to investigate. And for an enhanced investigation property, again, industrial, garages, bulk fueling facilities, dry cleaners, um, we have to, the owner must provide information concerning persons with specific knowledge. So that would be on site key staff that were intimate with the operation of the facility on that property. Under the CSA, it just said you must attempt to cite representative and occupants, government agency, and persons knowledgeable. So not quite as comprehensive a list, um, but still comprehensive enough. This here is what was required under the uh, sorry, this is what's required under the MOE standards. You can see all the things that we have to take a look at, observe the property, record limitations, use hazardous materials, interior, exterior, neighbors, um, potential sources of contamination on site, drums, tanks, internal processes that may result in, in contamination being uh, sent into the environment. Um, 